Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. We'll go back and rewind to the top of SummerSlam. The show opened with Liv Morgan retaining the women's world title, defeating... Uh, almost put Liv Morgan there, defeating Rhea Ripley in 15 minutes and 53 seconds after Dirty Dom turned on Rhea. I thought that was a great way to start the show. This is the best Liv Morgan character I think we have seen. I don't think that is debatable right now. Rhea Ripley is ridiculous. She is so over and deservedly so. As the match started, Pat McAfee said it looked like Ripley was put on earth to be standing in the middle of a stadium and kicking ass, and he is exactly right. I thought the way the match was set up with Liv on the run early and Rhea finally catching her, beating the hell out of her, having the tide turn when Rhea missed the spear and supposedly dislocated her shoulder, uh, popped it out of the socket. She played it up the best that you can, trying to fake <laughs> dislocating your shoulder the, and still working. I the mean, crowd like, went crazy for the spot, but I thought it was preposterous. It was. Yeah, look, anybody that's ever seen it, you can you once it's popped back in, you're fine. But one, it hurts a lot. And two, it's got to be done right away. And then you can go ahead and continue to compete. You can't compete and go back to it. But it didn't matter because the way the crowd was, that superwoman spot where she pops it back in, supposedly slamming it against the announcer's desk. The fans went absolutely ballistic for that. If you didn't see it, a chair got introduced by Liv. Rhea got it. Dom stopped her from using it and people booed at first. But it's like, well, it makes sense. She's going to get DQ'd. She won't win the title. As that conversation is Rhea starting to calm down from talking to Dom, Liv knocks Rhea into Dom, who fell off the apron with the chair. Liv hit the oblivion on the chair for a near fall, which she sold after Rhea kicked out like she knew she was going to die. Dom got up on the ring apron to distract the referee, put the chair back in the ring. Liv hit the oblivion onto it again, rolled out of the ring. The announcer sold it like Dom screwed up again, like what happened in Saudi Arabia. But then Dom comes up from behind Liv, who is in shock. He picks her up, kisses her, and Michael Cole did his best JR impression by calling Dom a sorry two-timing son of a witch. Except he did not say witch. And that was step one for the cracks to be shown in the Judgment Day tonight on Raw. Surely there's going to be something that plays out of this. Rhea Ripley a couple weeks ago, Tom, was really upset with the fact that a match was made with Jey Uso because, my God, you get Jey Uso involved, you get Sami Zayn involved. She didn't like either of that. And as we'll get to... Sami Zayn doesn't have the Intercontinental title weighing him down right now, so if he needed some partners to team up with to go against J.D., Carlito, and Finn, you know, Damian Priest and Jay and Sami might not be a bad thing. Yeah, I think the crowd is going to be really, really hot for Damian Priest as a baby face. Sami Zayn, Jay Uso, uh, they don't have a whole lot going on, it doesn't seem. So... Might as well keep them up in that main event scene and uh, they can feud with the rest of the Judgment Day or whatever comes out of that. I, I see my camera is frozen and on such a flattering picture of myself as I try to reconnect that. Braun Breaker won the Intercontinental title defeating Sami Zayn in about five and a half minutes. Uh, the match was scheduled to go longer, whatever happened. Apparently, I believe Fightful reported that. They did cut some time from it. It was the first of three title changes on the show. Didn't reinvent the wheel, just what it needed to be, which was a clear, clean victory for Braun. Finish came with Zayn, went for the Haluva kick, but Braun speared him. He then pulled the straps down, hit the ropes twice before hitting Sammy with another spear, and that was that. So, Sammy, I have a feeling, is going to maybe be migrated into something going on there with the break up of the judgment day but when it comes time uh for braun breaker to defend his title for the first time tom you think it's going to be against Ilya dragunov or do you think they have some sort of uh, different opponent planned oh you know i think uh maybe you throw in somebody like bronson reed you know a big guy we've seen braun breaker run through these smaller opponents a little bit. Why not give him a bigger guy where he can show off some more of his impressive power? L.A. Knight defeated Logan Paul in 12 minutes to win the United States title. 
kudos to the fan who brought the 1,708 days since Ohio State beat Michigan sign. I love that level of petty. Started outside on the floor where they brawled for a while before the match officially began. Logan Paul is a hell of an athlete, and now that he lost the title, he can go away. Surely he'll be back at some point, but Paul's entourage got involved, which included Machine Gun Kelly, who handed Paul brass knuckles. Paul climbed up on the apron, hit Knight with him, then he tried the buckshot lariat, but Knight blocked it and hit the BFT for the win. It is Knight's first title in WWE, probably not going to be his last. I, I thought it was a really good match. I will ask you this, too, because Cody had a very long entrance before it was time for him to come to the ring, and L.A. Knight had another long one. They've made a lot of cool changes, and I like when they do this every once in a while, but what do you think about these really, really long inter uh, ring entrances coming from the parking lot? Well, at this point, I'm used to them because we get one from Cody Rhodes every week. We had obnoxiously long entrances from the bloodline week after week it would take sometimes roman reigns eight minutes to walk down to the ring on smackdown which is great if you're a reviewer and you want to fast forward but i mean if you're looking at it from a time management standpoint uh it's pretty poor the other thing that gets me is when somebody has to make a run in and it takes them you know a full minute to run down to the ring it kind of kills it a little bit but but i tell you what that and that was a long long entrance way tiffany stratton was getting it in the next match that we're talking about coming up with bailey and uh nia jacks when it came time for randy orton's running at the end of the show it was more of a uh more of a, a fast jog, but Nia Jax did win the WWE Women's title by beating uh, Bailey in about 12 and a half minutes. Uh, this I may have been the best singles match, not involving Becky Lynch, that Nia has ever had. It built really well to the spot where Tiffany Stratton's music hit, and she ran down to the ring with the briefcase. Bailey knocked her off the ring apron before she had a chance to do or say anything. Uh, Bailey then got a near fall on Nia before Jax hit two power bombs and two annihilators for the victory. Tiffany and Nia uh, obviously celebrated together. It seemed as if it was a big setup. We could maybe find out later on, insert some drama into the mix of, over whether Tiffany was really going out there to get involved in the match or not. But you think uh, you do Nia and tiffany by survivor series or do you think you, you extend that one out a little bit more i think by survivor series i'll probably be ready to see that match i would prefer that they stretch it out a little bit more i don't think i know they want to it seems like get this title on tiffany uh sooner rather than later but i'd like to see it go a little bit longer where she's not even necessarily chasing, but just not where she's the champion. She's not the best wrestler that they have. She's not the best, most polished female act that they have. She might be one of the most over, uh, but I think she could use a little more seasoning before they give her the title. It'll be interesting. Plus, come on, Nia Jax rules. The, the new Nia Jax, the new Brian Alvarez approved Nia Jax. Be oh, now he switched his he switched his tune. Be interesting to see if she loses that title. And he who, switched his tune? Well, he he just is saying that she may be in the best shape she's ever been in, and, oh. and this is the best Naya that he has ever seen. That's what he's saying. Hey, I don't can't know. disagree there. My queen. <laughs> Sheamus was judged on whether his matches are hard enough to deserve a Mark's Hard Lemonade, and that was kind of a wacky commercial. It was nothing like the Manscaped commercial, which involved Baron, Cor Baron Corbin, Apollo Crews, Otis, Maxine, and Tozawa. You want to describe that for the people? Well, I'd like to back up. Are we to believe, are we to believe that Mike perhaps was taking one of these blue pills when he was mixing up this lemonade? As a mic, I can neither confirm nor deny that. No. No. I don't. <laughs> this segment with Otis and the Manscaped was something else. It was like this well. show. Like this segment is really. <laughs> he fakes like he's going to Things go are getting a little bit hairy. Yeah, he was. He was. He pulled it out like he, he took the device, which. Yeah, the device. Gonna... He did. He pulled out the shaver. 
not to, sh you know. I don't know. That didn't look like a shaver to me. It looked like a personal massage device or something like that that, that somebody would pick up somewhere. But he took the, it. The name of one of their products, Mike, I don't know which one he had, but the one for your genitals is called the lawnmower. Is it really? Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.